Come on, America! Not come on our boys. <laughs> Unlike the England women's team, uh, U.S. men's national team will be in action in the Gold Cup alongside some other talented teams in the world. Honduras, Haiti, Mexico, Haiti. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think this is a huge, huge test for the U.S. men's national team. We have only gotten better. I say we as in me. We have only gotten better as we go forward, and we can go right to the group stages for some predictions. Francis, Group A contains... If you do not qualify from this group at the top with maximum points, not to say Honduras are a physical team, they could cause some severe problems, but against Panama and Haiti, you better believe you should be going in there with maximum points. No discredit to them, but the way the United They're States were playing in the World Cup, Jason, the way the United States just beat Netherlands and Germany... Even though they were friendly games, the United States are in a, a hot on a form, and I believe that they should be qualifying from this group on maximum points. Right, Scotland so would qualify from that group on that maximum points. So, Internate made a little card here. Some internate. Players, some players to watch. It kind of go, goes Internate. Internate. All right. Internate. <laughs> Raise your he hand. Made us internate. A little, he made us a little card uh, to go with here. Uh, from Honduras, one of the top 10 players to watch in this Gold Cup, Andy Nasher, uh, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Eight goals in last year's Champions League, I believe. Yeah, he's not a bad player. Not a bad player, but obviously one player can't carry an entire team Yeah, uh, like that of Honduras, I should say. It's not like Honduras is a national team, if you remember them from the World Cup. Bruisers. Absolute bruisers. My they favorite were, team to yeah, watch. They, just destroy, they, they go, Wilson Palacio is in there. Uh, they stick in some hard tackles. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. And uh, I remember their game specifically against France. They were just leaving the foot in everywhere. Well, that's the French team. Yeah. Let's I, be real here. What does that mean? They just deserve to get kicked, Jason? Flying he, headbutts. Because he... Oh, okay. All right. Taking oh, Zidane out. If I was remove, closer, I would have flown. You from your memory of Zidane. Fans are getting upset. Don't pinpoint his only If you're going to ask anybody, anybody, what is the biggest moment in Zidane's career? No, I disagree. They're going to say... His volley against Bayern Leverkusen Champions League final in Hamden of Scotland. Number two... He headbutted Matt Ratz. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's in the top. Even you're saying it. It's second. I understand. No one, no one, I Jason. completely understand Zidane's domination. I get no it. I understand he's one of the greatest of all time to ever play the game, and you are a fanboy and you pump him. I get it. It really <laughs> makes sense. But Jesus uh, the, the United States don't have Zinedine Zidane, right? I wish they did. But or his sons. I wish they did have somebody that we could talk to uh, and discuss. I wonder if we do. The U.S. men's national team. Oh, wait. And it's not David Villa. Uh, you played under Coach Jurgen Klinsmann. He did a fantastic job in the U.S. team uh, going into the 2014 World Cup. What was that experience like, especially making it to the stage? One of the coolest things I've been a part of. I mean, we were like a family traveling around. It was a, a long camp uh, before the World Cup really started. And uh, just going out of that group stage, what people call the group of death, it was, it was incredible. Um, you know, we felt like we really had the support of every single American. And I was watching some videos while we were in Brazil of, of uh, fans watching games. And, and uh, when we scored the goal, they were going crazy all over the place. Um, so it's, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. And now, now we've got the Gold Cup coming up, and uh, hopefully we can get some of the same experiences and, uh, and do, as, do as well as possible. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been on a very hot run of form. Uh, big wins over the Netherlands, big wins over Germany, which is great to see from any fan perspective. Uh, going into the Gold Cup, what is the one thing you're trying to work on the most uh, to improve USMNT? That was a difficult question. What I'm trying to work on the most to improve them? I mean, just kind of do what I've been, been doing. I don't think I'm going to try to do anything new or special. Uh, they, they know what they get from me, and uh, I try to contribute as much as I can on the field and off the field, um, being a team player. So it's always nice with the Gold Cup. Last time I was there, I was traveling around the States and seeing new parts of the of, of America I haven't seen before. So Any, ex any uh, favorite destination so far? Last year, Chicago in the summertime was absolutely fantastic. You're supposed to say New York, man. Oh, New York. <laughs> we, we, we didn't go there uh, for, the last, for the last Gold Cup, so no, it was every single place we went, the people were fantastic, and uh, yeah, it was, it was sellouts to a lot of the places as well. Were you going to go and do your homework after that? <laughs> your backpack on? Right. <laughs> I was actually started. like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, so we, uh, that was at the Adidas uh, event for New York City FC, which they, it was funny because they said, like, okay, press can go up and talk with the players, and we get up there, and, like, they're all sitting behind a table. Right, and we're like, okay. So there's, like, all these people doing interviews, like, just leaning over. 
Francis, can I get your Francis? Do they have backpacks on? Uh, some of them. Actually, no, no. So, uh, David Villa's uh, one of the guys that was next to him. Yeah. Was signing backpack. Nice. Did you get your backpack? I signed? thought about getting my backpack. Signed. Did everyone at school think you were cool? Uh, yeah, man. I came back, did the one strap like Channing Tatum taught me in uh, Twenty One Jump Street. Worked out really well. Awesome. But uh, Mick Diskaru from the U.S. Men's National Team stumped them on one of the questions. Yeah, that was a good stuff. I, I, I felt yes, like the he, challenging he, questions at TYT. I think that was a good question, but I don't know if he he answered it in terms of his own perspective. And yeah, I think exactly. you meant a team's perspective as I well. I meant in both. I told yeah. him because well, it's funny because we went over some of the questions beforehand. And I, he knew exactly what was coming, and then he was like, oh. Oh wait! A difficult question. I don't know what to do, but uh, but he's a real. He, he really was a really awesome guy. Really nice. And do we have uh, do we have the the graphics for the other groups? That are yeah, going we on? do. Let no, me, we let's do. take a look at the rest of the teams who are going to uh, be the competition against uh, uh, the United States. So this more this is a more challenging group: Canada, Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Jamaica. The standout there for me, Costa Rica. The biggest upset uh, was their qualification from another group of death during the World Cup with uh, Uruguay, England, and Italy. No one expected the Costa Ricans to emerge from that group. And they, they, they have basically, a beautiful country. They have a, a, a beautiful country and a, a fantastic, uh, I would say, just team camaraderie. Without that team, uh, they've got Julie Campbell, who plays up top, who was on loan at Arsenal. Didn't exactly shine as much as everyone expected him to after that World Cup, but nonetheless still a threat for them. Um, and I think that they, and of course, uh, Navas and Goals, they are definitely... <laughs> did you just, Sorry, the chair made a funny noise. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> and of course, Navas in goals is a ph phenomenal goalkeeper. So you can't count out the Costa Ricans, but at the same time, Canada, maybe? Jonathan Osorio, the only guy I can even mention on that team that I know of, Toronto's uh, FC player. Yeah. Uh, he's, I mean, again, the thing with the Gold Cup is when you look at all these teams, like, it's not Copa America. Yeah. And it's, uh, we know it's not going to be nearly exciting of a, of a pace. Yeah. But, like, the one thing I'm taking into this and the one thing I'm paying attention to more than anything else, and this is the most American mentality in the world, is the U.S. men's national yeah, team. Yeah, of course. Because, again, we look at those groups, and Costa Rica made a huge surprise in last year's World Cup. And, you know, you have teams like Jamaica who aren't just nobodies. Yeah. But I think it's gotten to the point for the U.S. men's national team that if they don't make the final, it's a giant letdown. And yeah. they're not going to hit those expectations. Jurgen Klinsman came out and said during the 2014 World Cup, I believe right after we got knocked out, that we will be going far into the 2018 World Cup. Yeah. And it starts here. It, does. it starts with these smaller competitions. All right, who else is in the next group? Let's group go C. through to Group C. Not a bad Cuba, group either. Guatemala, Mexico, and Trinidad. So this is an interesting point for me to try and figure out. I, I class myself as one of the most knowledgeable guys in the history of the world, in world football at the moment. Not the history, I in the world. I, 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 I could attest to that. All right, so, uh, but I, I don't know anybody else. I want to know, is there a rivalry between Guatemala and Mexico? Think so. There's no rivalry between them. Apparently, I heard that it was a bit. There was a game that uh, was actually a friendly game, and it was a, a huge turnout between Guatemala and Mexico. Well, I, I think both the countries have big representations yeah. of their national squads, especially Mexico, who has Hector Herrera, who I mean, and they I, don't have Chicharito anymore. That's the one injured. thing. But it's Herrera's an interesting player in this tournament because with Chicharito out, it's going to fall on him. Yeah. Uh, and of course, their coach, who's great. Yeah. But um, Chicharito's out with a broken collarbone. That's unfortunate because uh, the game that we watched, the warm-up game uh, against Costa Rica, although they conceded some early goals, when they were going forward in the second half, they looked pretty deadly. Giovanni Dos Santos just rolls back the years from when he was one of the hottest prospects in Barcelona when he plays for Mexico. Again, in the World Cup, he was a, a nightmare for every team he played against. Uh, he's just so hard to deal with. He's very small, centre of gravity is low, and he's a good player, and he finishes the ball very well. Him and Chicharito had a unique partnership up top, uh, and Carlos Vela, uh, who some people may know from his previous time at Arsenal as well, another good player. But Hector Herrera is their playmaker in the middle of the park who's tenacious. Uh, in the World Cup, he was making some of the harshest tackles whilst making some of the most unbelievable passes. And, and I think that he is, as you're right, I think he's going to be inspirational going forward. It's just about whether they can keep the goals out. Because two goals uh, at the point of conceding against Costa Rica, two of them in the first half were very easy goals that they conceded, although it was a friendly. I think they really need to, to show things up in the back. Friendlies are never actually that friendly. Uh, one yeah. thing to point out off the top 10 Gold Cup players to watch. One of the players is named Carlos Ruiz. Yeah. Guatemala. Wrong. Carlos Ruiz. And this is going to piss off a lot of world football fans. Carlos Ruiz plays for the Philadelphia Phillies Major League Baseball team. So that rounds up the groups uh, in yes. the Gold Cup. So it's clear that, for me, the United States sh should be making the final in this group. I mean, you can't count any of these teams out. I think a U.S. versus Mexico would be US awesome. U.S. Mexico would be an awesome final, but as well, Costa Rica, you can't Ooh, count them out. Sure. You can't count uh, Honduras, Jamaica. I just think that with the way that the U.S. men's national team have been playing, they've been installing uh, some youth 
in amongst their team as much as their experience of the Michael Bradley and Clint Dempsey's but of the world. no Julian Green for the U.S. Men's National yeah, Team. You're in Klinsman, and I trust you're in Klinsman. I'm going to start calling him when he, if he can start winning these, these trophies. I'm gonna Jürgen Winsman. The, no, I'm going to start calling him the Phil Jackson of men's soccer. What? My nickname was so much better. Jürgen Winsman? And you just came out with like Phil Jackson and soccer? No one knows Phil Jackson. <laughs> well, they outside will! Of the, outside of the world football. I bet they be... will. Jürgen Winsman. Write it down. What a nickname. Um, but... I would like to see a U.S. men's national team versus Mexico final. Still, I, I just fancy Costa Rica and these tournaments to definitely go far. They're, they've now changed the way people look at Costa Rica in terms of world football. They were so, uh, such a tight-fit unit that I think that they are going to be a team to cause some problems. But Mexico, point to prove, or they, they took their B team to the Copa America and did not perform very well. I don't think uh, people who covered the tournament were too happy with Mexico and Miguel Herrera's decisions to take those players. But... They went out with a, a, an assured start in 11 in some of their friendly games. Without Chicharito, they're still going to be a, a tough task. So uh, my prediction is, Jason, I really don't know yet. I'm going to wait for the first game. But Ooh. I think the, the, US women, the, the, US, the US men's oh, national team, if they win this competition, I feel it's another step in the we're right on, direction for everyone taking them seriously. We're on the radar. Yeah, I, well, you're still already on the radar. But check out my clip that I talked about and I made... A fantastic point, and someone actually quoted it in an article. I'll send that, put in a link. When I said the the biggest problem with the U.S. men's national team is the United States. People do not believe in the U.S. the the United men's the United States men's national team are that good because you're not the best. Was you're the not ar- NFL. Was the article the Onion? The article was FrancisMaxwell.com. Quote FrancisMaxwell.com. That's a trusty news. For you guys. <laughs> there you have so it. Make sure to check it out. Francis, take us home. I'm going home. Subscribe to TYT Sports. <laughs> At Francis underscore Maxwell, at Jason Rubin 91, at DYT Sports.